it's an easy way to understand it. The more DNA damage you have, the more your risk for cancer goes up. And what are the core cause? What are the things that cause DNA damage? What are the things that cause cancer? Chronic inflammation, elevated blood glucose, environmental toxins, stress, unhealthy diet, and lifestyle behaviors. Those are really the six core underlying causes of cancer that we can really group everything together, right? And so if we can start to address those in our lives, in our diet, in our lifestyle, then we can start to get to the underlying root cause of cancer and we can actually do something about it. But I venture to bet, and this will be a question back to you, is how many of those six core causes of cancer are the same core causes of diabetes? You know, I was actually just thinking about this in, in my head. You said one of those core causes of cancer is high blood glucose. That's powerful. That's really powerful. I did not know that. I actually just learned something in this case because um, I knew that there was an association, but I didn't realize that there was necessarily a cause and effect relationship, which is what you're describing. So did I, did I get that properly? Yeah. Well, basically, I mean, what we see is... Um, High blood glucose leads to high insulin, right? Correct. And that buildup of blood sugar that continues to happen in, in the body because of that elevated blood glucose becomes a fuel source for cancer cells. So, yes, there's a direct association. I mean, I go on and to, to – I go a little bit further to that and say, look, we could actually call this a cause. We may call it a symptom. We may call it, hey, it contributes to cancer. Um, but I would take it further and say this is my theory, if you will, and say this is actually a cause because without it, then the, the risk for that cancer goes down exponentially. Once you, once you add that to it, now your cancer goes up. You increase the fuel source for cancer cells that they didn't have before, right? Cancer thrives on sugar. Cancer thrives on glucose. So if you are, um, you keep the glucose level high and the cancer cells are like, hey, we need food and you don't have enough food for them, they can die off. But if they just have an unlimited supply of food now and you keep damaging the DNA and you got chronic inflammation and then that high insulin, now doesn't high levels of insulin, now you tell me from your expertise, does that cause chronic inflammation? Yes. I was just going to go into insulin. So, uh, so, hyper and, 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 so I want you to talk about that. But before you do, I just want to make this correlation actually, and lead to causation because we know for a scientific fact that chronic inflammation is a cause of cancer. And there's a whole process in which I've researched extensively how chronic inflammation actually, that the, the repair and damage, repair and damage, repair and damage of the chronic inflammation, the byproducts of those cells through that repair and damage process actually causes cancer. So that's why you can officially say chronic inflammation causes cancer. Well, if elevated blood glucose leads to high insulin levels, which is not only a fuel source, glucose fuel source for cancer, but the insulin itself is causing the chronic inflammation, then we know that it is causing cancer at the same time. Yes, you, you nailed it actually. So it's, it's a domino effect, right? You start with one thing and then you progress to the next and the next and the next and the next and you increase your risk every single time you knock over the next domino. So there's a body of research that demonstrates just how dangerous it is to live in a chronic hyperinsulinemic state, aka a state in which insulin concentrations in your blood are elevated for a large majority of the day. And if that persists over weeks to months to years, it can present serious metabolic complications. And the number one metabolic complication of having of living in a chronic hyperinsulinemic state is heart disease. And there are papers that actually demonstrate that if you want to detect heart disease and you want to determine someone's risk for what's called a future cardiac event, just measure how much insulin they're secreting right now. And it'll tell you their risk for a cardiac event five years into the future. It's, it's fascinating. But secondarily, you're hitting it on the head here, which is that insulin is the most potent anabolic hormone in the body. It's the most powerful anabolic hormone, which means that it is responsible for more cell growth and more fuel storage than any other hormone in your body. And so if you live in a chronically hyperinsulinemic state, what that means is that the signal to replicate cells is constantly on. And as a result of that, cell replication happens at an advance at an accelerated rate. And as more cell replication occurs, 
more DNA damage occurs, more cell replication errors occur that can then propagate, not get fixed, and then lead to an oncogenic gene that can then progress to creating a tumor that can then metastasize over the course of time. So there is no question that hyperinsulinemia and cancer are directly related to one another. Right. And so let's look at insulin resistance, for example. Like, so because of that loss of the insulin and the mTOR2 signaling that happens, right? Basically, that results in an in, in enhanced production of the MCP1. And the MCP1 recruits monocytes and activates the pro inflammatory M1 macrophages. So that process and like without geeking out too far down that path, because I don't think people care too much. <laughs> the process <laughs> is that high insulin, uh, elevated blood glucose, both of these things in one way or another, eventually over time in a chronic state can and often do lead to cancer. So let's back it up a little bit. We see these, these very profound similarities between diabetes and cancer, right? We see very similar underlying causes or correlations between the two. We see very similar uh, physiological functions that can um, uh, basically make these diseases seem almost like the this different branches of the same tree. And I'd put heart disease on there and I'd put neurological uh, disease on there and I'd also put autoimmune disease on that same tree. These are just branches of the same tree. How it manifests in the body might look a little bit different. This person might have cancer here. This person might have diabetes here. This person might have diabetes, autoimmune disease, cancer, and Alzheimer's over here. And we're seeing a lot more of that where people are being diagnosed with two, three, four, and five, you know, chronic metabolic related inflammatory diseases. Well, if we get to the underlying root cause of that and start addressing it, we can not only uh, empower our bodies to prevent these diseases, but do their best to try and reverse them. And now, in no way, are you or I or anybody here guaranteeing that doing anything that we say is going to reverse your diabetes 100% or going to reverse your cancer 100% or prevent 100%? But we do know through the science and through anecdotal healing stories and through thousands of case studies that by doing each of these things that we can talk about, you can certainly reduce your risk and you can do what nature intended, which is empower our bodies to heal themselves.